All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are planting out the heated raised bed. It is November here in Michigan and it is getting cold outside. In fact, this week it's supposed to get down to uh, possibly below 20 degrees at night. And so it's been, it's starting to get pretty cold. Um, it's, it has consistently been in the low 30s to upper 20s at nighttime. And uh, so far the, uh, the heated raised bed has been working great with very, very limited uh, wood input and uh, it's been keeping things nice and warm and I'll go through some of that here today but mainly we're going to be planting out some new seeds today uh, from straight from the packet from MI Gardener and uh, I have been an affiliate or partner with MI Gardener for a couple years now uh, and I absolutely love the seeds and his seed store and uh, the gardening store that he has uh, right here in Port here on Michigan. His website is just filled with uh, with seeds and all kinds of different varieties and information and uh, gardening know-how. He has a book out. He's got uh, his own fertilizer line and a whole bunch of stuff that he has available on his site. And so I'll put a link in the description of that, of course. And uh, because I'm a partner with him, uh, you guys get 10% off your, uh, your seed packets. So instead of 99 cents each, they're only 89 cents each, which is pretty cool. So that's where we get all our seeds from. It's important to start with good seeds. And, and I like to pick all heirloom stuff because as you can see I like to save those seeds and uh, and keep planting those things Remy, you're breathing in my microphone you can't do that that's that's not gonna help us out so I've got a bunch of straw that I put down in this end of the bed uh, I've got a citrus uh, orange tree or a clementine tree growing in here and all these bell peppers and eggplant I, I, I kind of put straw around all that stuff that's just gonna help keep weeds down in there so I don't have to worry about that as much and it'll help hold some heat and moisture on those plants as well so we'll take you guys down to the other end of the heated raised bed here and uh, show you what we've got going we'll get our, our square foot gardening template out and we'll start to plant out some of our winter crop the plan is to grow here from November we're beginning in November right now we're gonna grow all the way through until springtime with uh, with these crops and hopefully we'll get several harvests out of these things uh, in that time frame so let's go check it out so for those of you who are new to the system very briefly there is an outdoor wood boiler that used to heat our home that now is sitting out here you can see it just kind of smoking out there it's just sitting at an idle right now big tank of water in there and uh, through a little diverter here we've got some pipes that come in uh, underground and then they pop up over here and they go into this little heating system this thing that we built last year uh, this is basically just an old fan that i found in the barn we moved in and a, like a radiator uh, the hot water cycles through there and you feel this thing is pretty hot right now we keep the water at about 140 degrees and whenever there's a cord that runs uh, down here all the way down to the uh, far end there's a little uh, thermostat uh, that I'll show you at the other end there so whenever that little thermostat gets down below 40 degrees it kicks on the uh, heater down here and then that just blows some nice warm air um, down this tunnel now of course we keep the sides uh, closed here on both sides uh, for the night and anytime really they can stay stay closed pretty much through the whole winter so i just have them up now because we're, we're working in the garden so that nice warm air kind of drafts down here and and uh, once it warms up the far end and that thermostat then gets up to 45 degrees it uh, kicks that fan off and then it uh, just sits idle until it gets below temperature again so this is the thermostat that i'm using uh surprisingly this thing was pretty cheap on amazon and it is perfect for this application uh, it has a heating and a cooling option so you can plug in a fan to cool this if it gets too hot and right now i just have a have that fan at the other end there plugged into this extension cord from the heating side and so this is your kind of mean or median temperature that you want it to stay at and you can set the variance so when it drops i have it set at five degrees so once it drops down to 40 uh, that's five degrees below my set temperature it kicks the heater on heats it back up to 45 then shuts the heater off and then i have it set at uh, 25 degrees above that so once it gets to 70 degrees uh, it would kick on a cooling fan if i wanted to do that say in the summertime so that would keep it at uh, you know between 65 and 70 degrees uh, if, if the sun's out right now it's at about 76 it's kind of cloudy and it's about 35 40 degrees outside um, if i closed the if i rolled the sides down on this uh, this would jump up to about 95 here pretty quick i have never grown a, a clementine or orange tree out here but we're going to try that this year uh, it's normally in our house so we'll see if we can keep that alive we have a bunch of bell peppers and other little ones here that we took out from the garden to overwinter you can see those are starting to come back now getting getting little leaves on them and their the roots are established and those will start taking off here pretty soon
But today we're going to focus on planting out this end of the garden. We have some Swiss chard that I kept. I cut that all back and that's growing back. We've got a couple kale plants that are growing back from roots in here. And so we'll we'll uh, see if that uh, that survives. Got a couple, couple of those growing in here. That's fine. And a couple volunteers that just popped up out of some scraps I think that I threw in here. Uh, Swiss chard pieces that just rooted and started growing. So... Uh, we may take those ones out. I don't think I need that much Swiss chard. So I'm using two different kinds of uh, the MI Gardener seeds, uh, two different packages anyway. There are some from the Homestead Collection, and the Homestead Collection are more expensive, but they have uh, over twice as much seed in them in each package. So they're a little bigger, bigger packages, more seeds, which I do like. Uh, and then these packages here, these are the old uh, seeds. I think these are from last year um, or earlier this year. Uh, these are the 99 cent packets or 89 cents if you use the link in the description, of course. And so we're planting some onions, a couple herbs, a bunch of carrots. We really like uh, growing carrots in here. I'm going to try to grow cabbage again. I have not been successful yet. I've had worms and moths and other things eat it up. So hopefully in the winter it'll be better. And we've got some lettuce and I'm going to try to grow maybe one or two broccoli plants. These get pretty big, um, but I think if I put them in the center, they might do all right. Then we have our DIY square foot gardening template, which I have talked about many times before. Built this a few years ago and I use this to lay out all of our planting and raised beds. This gives us a color-coded seed spacing for various kinds of plants. For instance, cabbage, they're pretty big, so one of them goes in the center of one square foot. Onions, generally we could plant uh, here, so these purple ones right here, that gives them about uh, 12 inch distance between a row and then a couple inches between each one. That's pretty standard for onions. Uh, you could also grow some things in four, a four pattern, which is the white circles. Um, the carrots, they'll go in a 16 pattern, so 16 per square foot, that's all the red circles, and so on and so on. So you can use that to space your plants however you want to, and it just gives you a nice layout and everything's spaced just right. Let's uh, figure out how we're gonna lay things out here and get started with some planting. So the nicest thing about these seeds the amount of seeds that you get for 99 cents is unbelievable. This template allows us to make a nice flat indentation here. So for broccoli, we'll probably give it a little extra spacing. So I don't want to be right next to the wall on this first one. So I'll do these two right here. So I'm only going to put two seeds in each spot. So this way we're not wasting a bunch of seed by putting a whole bunch in here and then having to thin them out later. We'll just put two per hole. And then we'll thin out that extra one if we need to. So we're going to plant some cabbage next. And I'm going to move over here and plant it uh, pretty tight into this Swiss chard. And we'll just keep pruning this back on this side. I don't need this much Swiss chard anyway. Which will grow pretty big too, so these are going to blend in together. We're growing in very limited, you know, really very expensive space when we think about how much time it takes to maintain this and heat it and all that stuff. So. We want to pack as much food in here as we can. We don't want any empty space. This is also heated soil. There's a coil of water piping that goes underneath the soil here. That water, that boiler heats all that, so the soil is warm. So we get a real good germination that way. So we'll use a lot of carrots and carrots are great because there's no rush to harvest them. Uh, these are the Danvers 126. These are a perfect carrot for us here. 60 to 80 days. So usually we get, uh, I would say, a good 90 days on these carrots from germination all the way through. Just one or two seeds in each hole. One of the reasons this is so efficient using a template like this is because traditionally we make a row for carrots that would go all the way down here, all the way down here, all the way down here, and then we sprinkle seed all the way along that row. Then we come back after they've sprouted and we thin out everything in between about this spacing. And so this way, if we just put one or two seeds in each of these holes, we get pretty good germination rate. We end up with 16 plants that are already spaced far enough apart. Now, we still may, may need to do a little bit of thinning if we both seeds or if you get more than two in there like I am doing here 
but uh, you have far less seed waste and you can make the most out of the seeds that you have so if you spend 89 cents on a packet of seeds and you can grow you know 100 carrots or something like that that's it's a pretty good return So here is a full eight square feet of carrots that we planted. Uh, so there's 128 carrots that were planted in that uh, amount of space. And that was one seed packet. And you can see how much seed is still left in there. So we could easily uh, plant probably triple that. I would say there's enough in here to plant um, another three eight foot sections like this. Uh, now this is the homestead collection. So these, these seed packets are a little more expensive and they have more seed in them. But uh, your price per carrot, I mean, you're still talking about, you know, less than a penny a carrot, probably less than half a penny a carrot there. I want to do some lettuce here. This is Black Seeded Simpson. And with this lettuce, we can pack it pretty tight because we're going to cut and come again with this. So we'll keep cutting it down uh, as it grows. So we won't let it get too big. So we'll we'll go ahead and do 16 per square foot here. They're still here. Still lots of seed left in there. This is this is the dollar store uh, spinach seeds here. Um, I just had these these laying around, and so I'm going to plant them. But this is how much seed we have. And these were more than 99 cents at the dollar store. This is Dollar General, so it was I think they were dollar fifty or something like that. So that's that's the amount of spinach that we get. After planting the uh, dollar store packet of seeds, and that is four square feet or 32 spinach plants that we planted. So we've got about eh, what is that? Maybe 16 seeds left, maybe 20 seeds left in there. So. Uh, not quite enough to plant another row, so we'll just get rid of those. So the garden is planted. Uh, now all we have to do is wait and hope that everything germinates well in this cold weather coming up. This system isn't fail safe, so you'll have to stick around to see what happens. Will this thing fail? Will everything freeze? Uh, all it's going to take is one fan failure, thermostat failure, boiler failure, uh, water leak, <laughs> you know. One thing goes wrong here and uh, everything's going to freeze. So it's very similar to the movie The Martian. Uh, basically when all of his potatoes died because uh, the, the side of the hab blew off and, and the freezing cold air came in and just wrecked everything. That's all it's going to take here in Michigan. It's like, <laughs> it's like living on Mars in Michigan, basically. And of course, if you do use that link in the description uh, over to the MI Gardener site, it is an affiliate link. Uh, we work with them and they give all the SSL Family Dad viewers a 10 cent discount on those seeds. So instead of 99 cents, you get them for 89 cents a packet. And uh, I think that's a pretty darn good deal. I've had super good luck with those uh, MI Gardener seeds. And so uh, I have no problem promoting that uh, every time I plant uh, because I love them so much. So. Check the seeds out. If you guys have questions or comments, of course, let me know. What do you guys think of the heated raised bed? If this is your first time checking it out, you think it's gonna work? Uh, is it gonna fail? We'll see, you'll have to, to stick around and uh, do the updates. I'll probably do very similar updates that I did last time, 30, 60, 90, 120 days. Uh, we'll go through and see how things are growing when there's snow on the ground and, and uh, frigid temperatures. We'll see how, how cold it gets outside and how warm we can keep this thing and how much wood we're gonna burn. So lots of unknowns, so follow along to find out those things. Of course, subscribe so you can follow along with that so you get notified when we post new content and all that good stuff. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on today's video and all of the SSL Family Dad videos. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.